All right, guys, as I struggle to fit everything on this uh, or in frame for the video today, we're going to be ranking thick. Today, I wanted to rank blade shapes. Now, for me, I will say there are dozens and dozens of blade shapes, even more than what is going to be in this video. But I think that for the most part, we have the vast majority, I'd say probably at least 80% of the world's knife of the world's knife blade shapes like here represented and this will cover the vast majority i think of what most people will find out in the world and so we're also going to be looking at this um ranking from the perspective of everyday carry and general purpose tasks so of course this is important to note because something like this double-edged dagger is a blade shape that would be really good for self-defense right this is the type of knife that you this is the type of blade that you might want to use if you need to protect yourself from someone or something, right? However, if you are just opening up boxes and packages, a double-edged dagger actually presents more of an issue because its two edges mean that you could accidentally cut yourself more easily than a single-edged. So that's kind of what I'm coming at um, from that perspective. Like I said, each one of these blade shapes, it's really important to note, exists for a purpose and obviously there was an intent behind the design and the creation of each. So with that lead up out of the way, let's talk about, and I'll put these in order of what I think are the most useful EDC blade shapes slash tip shapes uh, out there, at least for the most part. So I'm gonna put all these guys away and we'll jump right into it. Let's jump into it with number one. The first one for me is going to be the good old Warncliffe. And the reason why I think the Warncliffe is number one from the perspective of EDC, it's not necessarily my personal favorite, but it is a really good do-all tip slash blade shape. And part of this is because the Warncliffe honestly copies the box cutter blade style and blade shape a lot. And it gives you a lot of what you want. It gives you a lot of control. You can easily choke up with most blades onto that tip very well. So if you're trying to cut open a package without cutting too far, too deep, uh, this is a really good blade shape for that. It also gives you good general purpose abilities. You could push this into self-defense so it's not gonna be the most like stabby style of tip but it still would work in a pinch and there are self-defense knives that certainly are um, worn cliffs but for the most part it gives you like I said a very a trip uh, gives you a tip that you can control very easily and for the most part it gives you a very long low sweeping blade most and sometimes uh, even with a good portion of worn cliffs they are just strip flat blades uh, some of the newer ones like this guy here have a little bit more belly to them, but it gives you a lot of slicing ability. And that is for the most part when you're doing general utility tasks, optimally what you want. So for me, number one is going to be the Warncliffe. <clears throat> now, moving on, I think number two for me has to be the drop point. And honestly, it's kind of a mixture for me. I honestly feel like pretty much the drop point and clip point are tied, but I generally like um, drop points a little bit more for the most part. They have a less exaggerated tip drop. And so it's just a subtle curvature. And what that ultimately means is that unlike something like on a worn cliff, you do actually get a belly. So if you are trying to do long slices or if if you are uh, rocking your knife at all, that belly is going to give you better cutting ability when you rock your knife. So if you do have to cut, especially like wire or something like that, having the ability to rock your knife is going to give it better leverage, better cutting power, and is going to allow you to power through materials that you might not otherwise be able to. So that is number two, the drop point. It also is widely available too. Like it's worth noting that drop points are one of the most common tip uh, designs slash blade shapes on knives. So you're going to find them on many different styles of knives and many different price points. All right, like I said and alluded to, <clears throat> the next one up is the clip point. 
Now the clip point itself is worth noting that, you know, it is similar in a lot of ways to the drop point, just most notably that how it kind of forms its belly and how that tip moves to meet the very end of the knife is usually in a straight, flat, downward slanted angle, giving it a clip like appearance. Now this blade shape is also a little bit more dynamic because it's also what you'd consider more of a Skinner style. So what that means is that this uh, spine and slash the blade as a whole is at a gentle um, kind of curvature going upwards like that. And then the clip point comes down to kind of meet an end. So this is potentially more of a Skinner styled blade shape as a whole, but it does have a clip point on the tip. Anyways, what both of those things mean, both the clip point and the Skinner, is that you do have a very long, very sweeping belly, and that is going to give you, once again, better slicing performance. The advantage that the um, clip point gives you is the fact that you are going to have um, a, generally speaking, this one has been sharpened to quite a bit, um, so it's not as pointed, but generally speaking, you're going to have a more pointed tip. It is going to be better at penetrating things if you're trying to say, once again, like open a box, it's going to be able to penetrate and start that cut pretty well. Now, with that said, like I said, that isn't necessarily everything that you need to do with a knife, but if you are doing primarily utility tasks, that type of cutting ability is going to be very important and very handy. So that is the clip point and Skinner blade shape as a whole, but primarily talking about the clip point. All right, next one up is going to be, and I don't have an exact, I would say like one-to-one -one here, but the closest thing I have for now to the Spyderco leaf shape blade is going to be the paramilitary or para family of blades. This one kind of falls into a weird, um, segment because spider goes there are many of them many para manix shaman all of those have a very similar blade shape to this but essentially the leaf shaped blade is kind of like a full flat ground um spear point almost but with a slightly more narrowed and slightly more refined tip now once again things like the manix and shaman do have more of a proper leaf shape so it's going to have a little bit more of a flared spine and so you're going to see curvature on the spine and curvature on the blade but this one as well like the para family has essentially the same actual blade shape so with a leaf styled blade like this you can see that there's basically a rolling curvature to the cutting edge and so once again this is actually going to lead you to have a very good slicing blade or once again if you need to rock your edge like this on a material to cut something it's going to perform very well uh, at that whereas something if you try to like rock this edge as you can see it doesn't really work that well because there's practically no belly on a worn cliff. So depending on what exact applications you need uh, for your blade, it will vary on that. So generally, I think as far as utility goes, this is going to be not quite as high up as something like a worn cliff, but still pretty important, pretty nice, and pretty darn versatile. Like it'll be able to do a lot of things. In addition, most of these leaf shaped blades are going to have very, very fine points. As you can see with this guy, like this is going to be very capable of penetrating and making very precise cuts. The ability to choke up on a leaf shape is probably where it lacks the most because especially if you have curvature on the spine where the spine is sticking out, it's going to be harder for you to get your index uh, finger onto the tip of the blade. It also depends somewhat on the length of the blade, of course, but having curvature on the spine will lead to that being more difficult. So anyways, um, <clears throat> overall, they are perfectly fine. And once again, it's splitting a lot of hairs really looking at the actual tip. All right, next one up, and we're kind of going to move into the next few being um, actual, like, more defensive blades, like more for self-protection. And so this one is going to be the Tanto or Tonto, however you prefer to say that. Um, and essentially, Tonto and Tanto blades uh, come in a wide variety of blade shapes, of course. Many of them do follow this American style, though, where you will see a noticeable... Um, kind of, I, 
it's noticeable but subtle um, like curvature and belly more towards the middle of the actual edge and then you will see it like I said kind of dip down here dip down here so the belly the highest point on this knife it's, again, it's kind of hard to see um, is technically more towards the center line of this and then you will see of course a very sharp almost the reverse idea of a clip point where a clip point though it is slightly different but you know makes a straight line downward towards the tip or the end of the blade a tanto is going to be a sharp upwards current a sharp upwards turn or cut towards the end of the blade. Now, some of them on like your nicer knives, like this Chris Reeves Sebenza, you will see just a little bit of flare and belly. So this does have some curvature to the actual tip. Whereas on some, usually your more budget uh, knives are going to have just a straight flat line that has a flat bevel going up to it. So once again, it kind of depends on how it's ground. Uh, but this one is just has just a little bit of belly to it. So with this blade um, or with this blade shape um, and slash tip style is really going to be focused on more tactical applications and penetration. So this isn't just so much giving you a tip that you have a lot of control over, but a tip that is really good at defensive use. Essentially, you're going to have primarily along the kind of I guess how the tip comes to an end is going to be sharpened on the cutting edge. Whereas something like a clip point, you know, when the straight is um, coming down to meet the end of the blade, you're going to have a maybe, you know, swedge, but by and large, it's not going to be sharpened. So this is going to offer far less resistance and far more penetration if you need to poke things with it. Now, one advantage in EDC for this is doing very fine-tuned tasks. If you're trying to cut open like a bag per se, this is going to give you a lot of options or a lot of, I guess, ease by knowing that this tip is going to easily pick up whatever you know, you're trying to cut and glide right through it. So it's definitely going to be a very pokey kind of tip. But outside of that, this really doesn't have that many applications for strictly speaking like EDC and utility. However, it's definitely not counterintuitive to use. And so that's why I placed it a little bit higher up is it is a more defensive styled tip, but because of how easy and natural it is to use and because it's not a large breakaway from the overall mold of solid um, use, it does tend to place pretty high. It also looks pretty cool too, which is always a nice little side factor. So that is the Tonto tip and uh, blade shape overall. All right, next one up is going to be the recurve. Now, once again, the recurve is another interesting one because there are some, you know, blade manufacturers or knife makers that combine things like Tontos and um, recurves. So sometimes you see recurves in different tip variations. And this one, even, uh, you know, because it's a recurve blade shape, still kind of does hold a bit of a drop point. So this is fairly similar to a lot of the performance of the drop point. The reason why this one is lower on the list, even though my personal favorite knives are drop point, or sorry, uh, are recurves, like my favorite blade shape is the recurve. Uh, this just isn't as practical for EDC because one, it is tougher to cut on with because essentially this is like the opposite of having a really nice belly. So essentially having a recurve is like the inverse of having a really nice uh, belly. So if you were to lay this flat on, you know, a surface and try to rock with it, you're really only going to get like this notable exaggerated belly portion that's going to be able to do like a lot of cutting motion, right? So if you tried to lay this like flat, you're going to notice that this, the center of this blade shape is not actually going to even touch anything. So it's very impractical for a lot of slicing and like cutting motions, because unless you are moving the knife through the object, if you're trying to bring the object to this actual blade, it's not going to be the most effective. And moreover, two recurves are specifically designed to channel 
um, materials primarily towards this portion of the blade. So another disadvantage to the recurve is you're going to see higher blade wear in specific areas, which kind of sucks. Lastly, too, um, when it comes down to it, uh, recurves are just very hard to sharpen on any conventional fixed angle sharpener, things like the Wicked Edge, the Edge Pro Apex, and many other knockoffs of those ideas uh, that hold, once again, your, they hold the knife in a fixed angle for you to sharpen. They will not be able to sharpen these uh, styles. And really, um, if you want to sharpen a recurve, you basically have to use, if you want to sharpen it, you have to use sandpaper on leather. And then if you want to strop it, you have to use like a leather strop to be able to contour to that blade shape. Now it can be done and when I sharpen these guys or rather when I hone them up because I don't necessarily let them get sharpening dull, um, I use just a leather strop to do that so that I can hit all of the angles on all of my recurves. So they're definitely not the easiest to sharpen uh, and for that I definitely think that it is a huge disadvantage and once again it just makes maintenance that much harder so they're not the best or most practical and then once again when it comes down to the tip for penetration certainly this is a stabby tip but at the same time too it really doesn't have any advantage that you wouldn't see in like a normal drop point because essentially it still is just a drop point so you're not really going to see any unique benefits there, but you will see unique disadvantages with the drop point. All right, last or all right, moving into the finals, we have the what I would consider a um, I guess ultimately a sheep's foot blade. This one's a little bit weird for a sheep's foot blade because this is my Spyderco Spidey Chef. And so traditionally, your sheep's foot blade is going to be a little bit lower. In fact. Um, my Benchmade 550 here is going to be a more traditional example of what you would expect for a sheep's foot blade. And you can see that there is some kind of heritage or some kind of uh, resemblance, family resemblance from a Warncliffe to a sheep's footed blade. The only difference is there's going to be a lot more curvature and belly and that's why I ultimately chose the Spidey Chef to kind of show off the sheep's footed blade is what you're giving up is that you're notably not going to be able to stab. I mean you guys can see here I'm literally like poking myself with a very sharp knife and as you can see no blood's coming out you know. So this thing does not have a tip for penetrating and obviously I mean if you push hard enough you can get this to stab into things but it's not going to do it well it's not sharpened something like a tonto once again has most of the tip sharpened whereas this has pretty much no sharp tip on it at all the advantages to this is if you are trying to cut along something that you're trying to not damage so especially in like search and rescue ems um, first responder kind of ways you know if you're trying to like cut off clothing off of say like a burn victim or something uh, you know this is going to be able to slide along and be smooth to the skin or whatever is underneath what you're cutting, but yet still move along and cut things. Now, this doesn't make it 100% safe. Do obviously use blades respectively and you know smartly, but it just minimizes the risk of catching something on that tip. So say you're moving along, like you can see, this tip isn't catching my skin, it's not cutting me, um, and I would really have to like angle this down to get it to catch my skin. So in addition to this, you'll see with a lot of sheep's footed blades, that you are going to have tons of belly. Now, of course, with the Spidey Chef, it's a little bit more exaggerated because this is literally designed as a chef style knife. So there's tons of belly for rocking. So if you were trying to cut or slice or dice things, this is going to be able to do that really well because you're able to rock on the entirety of the blade. So not every sheep's footed blade is as exaggerated in belly as this. This just so happens to have a very exaggerated belly. However, it still remains true that it is very, very um, not pokey, so to speak. This is not a sharp tip at all. So where this might have some advantages is going to be, once again, in knives for food prep, in knives for first responders, for special situations. And that's why I'm placing it lower on the list is because this is really more of a specialized blade um, shape that's going to be really good at those very specific tasks and really poor at everything else. All right, last one up is going to be the double-edged dagger. Now, as I've said in the past, you know, uh, this blade is very, very good at one thing and one thing only, and that is defensive tactical styled use. So if you need to 
So if you need to use a knife in a manner to protect yourself or stop someone from doing something they shouldn't be doing or stop even anything like an animal, so to speak, this is where things like daggers are going to be very, very handy. Similar to the idea of a Tonto, the entire tip or rather tips, because there's kind of like two bellies, two, in a way there's one tip, but there's two leading edges to that um, tip it is going to be entirely sharpened and that means or conversely leads to the fact that there is going to be a high degree of penetration with this also when it comes down to um, daggers and such you're going to see a very high ability or very low resistance to penetration and and also too usually when it comes down to daggers you're going to see very thin blades so you can see just in example or in comparison to literally any of these other knives like the width of this blade is very small very thin very narrow even in thickness and that is because once again when you're trying to stab and penetrate you want the least amount of resistance and so the wider your blade is the more resistance that will be offered so ultimately with most daggers or double edges they're going to be very um, one use specific and that is going to be penetrating and unfortunately when it comes down to it like I said with EDC this isn't really a good uh, tap or this isn't a really good blade shape because while you know sure you need to penetrate to cut open the tip or you need the tip of your knife to be able to penetrate and cut open things like boxes packages stuff this will do that quite well but you can't choke up on the edge because obviously there's two edges so you'd get cut and you can't really utilize this knife to the fullest of its extent because trying to put your finger anywhere on the back of it would result in you being cut likely not long after so it's very difficult to use in any meaningful way as far as utility goes not being said once again in a self-defense situation that totally changes and this just so happens to be really good for those types of scenarios so ultimately when it comes down to it um, the double-edged dagger is the most of all the blade shapes here and all the, like the tip shapes and stuff is the most singular use case because many of these could be pushed into self-defense situations many could be pushed into utility tasks and such but it's ultimately about like which tips what blade shapes can do the most amount of tasks and unfortunately the dagger really can only do one task well and so that is why it's placed so low on the list anyways guys hopefully you enjoyed the video hopefully you enjoyed this uh, handy look at most blade shapes out there like i said i am very much aware that there are many more blade shapes and i will probably end up adding more and maybe even revising this video but uh, for now this covers i would say at least 80 percent of knives out there certainly all the mainstream blades and uh, yeah, hopefully this helps you guys. Other things that are worth mentioning too, or honorable mentions are things like the spear point. The reason I didn't throw the spear point even, or in this video, even though I did have the Spanto tip from Hinder, is just because the Spanto or the spear point as a whole is very similar to the drop point and clip point. It's somewhere kind of in the middle of these two. And personally, once again, I think the clip point and the drop point are already very similar. So the spear point is also very, very similar to all of them. So no, I did not forget that more common um, blade shape. I just didn't want to throw it in here because once again, it's very similar to others. Anyways, guys, as always, God bless and I'm out.